the Dharma textbooks in Thailand say that a, a funeral is an inauspicious occasion. But that's not a Buddhist concept. The Buddhist attitude towards funerals is that they help develop heedfulness. And in that sense, they're auspicious, if you use them in the proper way. There's a phrase in the Mahasiddhipatthana Sutta of the meditator who sees a dead body. You think, I am bhikkho gayo ewang tammo ewang bhavi ewang anatito. This body, too, has that nature has that condition, has an escape from that. In other words, whatever state a dead body is going to go through, your body someday is going to go through that as well, if they don't cremate it first. Now, it sounds like a depressing thought, but it's actually a thought meant to remind you of what's really important. It's not this body. There's a passage where the Buddha said, look at this body, all the stuff that comes flowing out of it, even when it's alive, all the stuff you've got inside. He said anyone who would, on the basis of his or her body, exalt self and disparage others, he said, what is that if not blindness? Even before you throw it away have to put it down. It still has lots of burdens, lots of problems. And in and of itself, it's really nothing special at all. What is special about it is that you can use it if you're wise. That's where the heedfulness comes in. Because you realize you're, you're not just the body. The most important part of you is the mind. And what shape is your mind? You can look in the mirror and see how fit your body is. But where are you going to see the fitness of your mind if you don't sit down and watch it? How are you going to watch it? Well, first you bring it to the breath, because you can't watch the mind in the past and you can't watch it in the future. You can only watch it here in the present. So you try to stay with the breath, because as long as you know you're with the breath, you know you're here in the present moment. You can't watch a past breath. You can't watch a future breath. It's just this breath right here, right now. And then while you're here with the breath, what else do you see? You see the intentions of the mind in the present moment. This is one area where we tend to be really blind. We learned even back when we were children sometimes to be dishonest with ourselves about what our real intentions were. Greed likes to hide. Anger likes to hide. Delusion likes to hide. And we go along with it. Even though it's there for us to see, we avert our gaze. You know, these are the things, if these things are the ones making the decisions in our lives, we're in really bad shape. This is why the beginning Dharma lesson is before you do something, ask yourself, what are the results going to be? What do you intend to happen as a result of your action? And once you get a clear answer, then ask yourself, is that going to harm anybody? Is it going to harm yourself? Is it going to harm others? Both. If you see that's going to cause harm, don't do it. If you don't foresee any harm, go ahead and do it. While you're doing it, watch to see what actual results are coming out. Because it's a basic principle in Buddhist teachings on action, is that some of the results come immediately, others come over time. So look for the immediate results. If you see any harm, stop. If you don't see any harm, you can continue. Once you're done, look at the long-term results. If you see that you caused any harm, make up your mind you're not going to do that again. If you don't see any harm, then take joy in the fact that you're developing, you're growing in the practice.
This is a basic principle in learning how to manage your life. You know, a lot of people say they don't have the time to look at their own actions. They've got too many other things they've got to worry about. That's got everything all mixed up. The world out there says you know, the important things happening in the world are things that politicians are doing, or businessmen are doing, or movie stars are doing, someplace else, some other time. And we allow ourselves to get deluded by that kind of thinking. But the things that really shape your life are the things you're doing right here, right now. This is why right here, right now, and your actions right here, right now, your thoughts, your words, your deeds. Those are the important things in your life. And if you don't have time to look at those, what are you going to look at? Who's minding the store? This is your first responsibility. This is why we develop the mind, so you can watch these things and see really what's going on. So your top priority in life should be making sure that your mind is in good shape. And this is how you look at it. Look at the mind through what its decisions are, its intentions in the present. That kind of fitness is the most important fitness. You look after the body, it grows up, it gets stronger for a while, and then it just starts turning around and goes back to where it came from. But the state of the mind doesn't have to be that way. It can continue growing and developing all the way along, all the way up to the very end of your life. It can keep on growing. Yom Gao is a good example. Kept on doing good every day, every day. Even the last week of her life, she began to notice some, some symptoms that things were not quite right, but she kept on doing good. She figured that was more important. So the end of her life was something we can take as an example. Even though the body may grow weak, you do what you can with it, whatever good you can think of. That's how you get the most use out of it, and that's how you keep your priorities straight. Because even when we're, we're doing good for other people, the purpose is to train your mind. You're generous so that you can overcome your greed. You observe the precepts so you can be very careful about your actions, very alert to what their consequences are. And of course, meditation is aimed directly at the mind. The Pali word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop good qualities in the mind, things like alertness, concentration, mindfulness, discernment, because these are the things that are your real protection. These are the things that are really important in life. So when you can think in this way, that's when your life is on the right track. And when you go to a funeral, you take the funeral as an opportunity to remind yourself what's really important. As for this body, I am Biko Gayo E Wang Tammo E Wang Pawe E Wang Natito. It's going to be like that body lying right there someday. And you don't know when. What you do know is you've got the opportunity right now to develop as much goodness as you can in the mind. So with each breath, do what you can. Make the most of each breath, because you don't know many, how many more breaths you're going to have. In this way, the important part of your life, the mind, benefits all the way down the line. So when it throws away the body, puts the body aside, it still is not left adrift. It's got its resources, it's got its support in the goodness that it's developed inside. 